Hello there. Sometimes when a project gets complicated, it's best to take a step back and simplify. I've done a fair bit of work on smooth belt 3D printers, and lately there are more folks in the space. I recommend you check out Princeps or Rob Mink's Baby Belt. Power Belt 3D is another operator in space. This is their failed beta, but he's still in there selling kits, conversions, and uh, most importantly, the belts. We have the CR30. I uh, only have the belt from them because I'm more in this to tinker than to acquire 3D printers. I have enough already. I don't need more. And of course, my own venerable print shift, combination to the Prusa Mini. Scaling up a belt is hard because to date we're all relying on tension to do so. And you can only put so much tension in a belt before you start to worry about the frame of your machine, or, in fact, the belt itself. The reason I don't use the uh, pet sheets, it pops pretty much randomly. How do you fix that? Well, I have the old printer bot here. Very heavy, very rigid. I know, kitty. Give me a minute, okay? It uses a stainless steel conveyor belt, just like NAC3D's White Knight, uh, the predecessor to the CR30. It's stiffer, so you need larger rollers and a lot more force to bend it around. Biggest problem with the steel sheets, when you have heated bed on there, it expands a bit too much. It makes it very hard to keep it flat across the entire surface. You tend to get bubbles. Now, again, tension can solve this, but there's a limit to that. The stiffer you... The stiffer your belt, too, the larger your roller needs to be. Unless your belt was only stiff in one direction, like tank treads. If your belt was rigid across your X and flexible on your Z, you could roll it around much more easily. Now, tank treads are complicated, annoying, and expensive. And there's a real question of how well they'll work in the first place. So the first question, the one that this video is trying to answer, is... So the first question, and the one this video is trying to answer, is can we make a linked conveyor belt cheaply and efficiently attached to a 3D printer? So in this video, I'm trying to make the simplest solid slat conveyor belt that actually works. I asked Send Cut Send to cut me a bunch of laser cut slats. These are 30 millimeters wide, which I consider a trade off of the tedium of assembling the belt, and the smaller these slats are, the smaller you can print. As this is, if you were to print something that was less than 30 millimeters wide, it would just ride the belt all around, unless you threw on a scraper, of course. But here I'm going to say, let's use the PrintShift XL, the big old belt for big things and the mini for miniature things. You do need kind of a lot of slats to build a large conveyor belt. I'm going to be using BuildTech on the surface. Did a quick test. Nothing sticks to bare aluminum. I didn't want to work about additives. I want to do something Tedious, simple, but functional. Three D printed a jig to hopefully make this a little bit easier. The back of the belt is just going to be held together with tape. We're going to have to cut the build tack for every slat, so that when this goes around the rollers, you're going to have to open up. You're going to have to open up that gap. All right, let's build. I'm hoping that this conveyor belt surprises me one way or another. I mean, I've never built a belt like this before. It just seemed like the quickest way to do so. All right, we're getting all the parts out. Then we're going to throw the build tack on them. Once we have everything build tack, we're going to flip 
and tape them together. The links in this belt is just tape. And I'm using two different kinds of pet tape because they're just what I have in my inventory. The thin blue pet tape and the thicker green pet tape. Hopefully to help it slide over the uh, printer bed easier. We want the belt to be as continuous as possible on top to get a good first layer, but since we're building this on top of an existing 3D printer with its heat bed, we need it to be smooth on the bottom as well. If we're lucky, the gaps in the belt will help to yeet the parts out of the printer. But I'd imagine things are gonna stick pretty well. Now, on the cost of this project, I ordered 50 slats to get the price break. Uh, no, the video isn't sponsored, not by Send Cut Send or anybody. That came out to $131, so $2.60 per slat, which is pretty good. Got a small pile of spares as well. I don't expect the tape to hold up for too long, but I figure I can reuse the slats with alternative mounting. For this build, the heated bed is as wide as the slats, so there's really no room for chain links without modifying the printer, which I can certainly do, but one thing per video. I'll be happy if the drive system and tensioners work, and I'm a little worried that I'll only be able to drive the belt backwards. The way I have it set up now, the rollers would push the bed forwards, and I'm not sure that you can push a linked tank tread belt without real tensioning? We're gonna find out. I'm not joining the belt into a continuous loop yet, I'll do that on the Doppelbot, which is my ancient Core XY test rig. I say ancient, but she's only six or seven years old. Not my eldest by a long shot, but by far the most convenient platform for attaching a belt. I've previously used a smooth belt on this machine, you can check the other videos. So we're using the same drive, just a couple stepper motors belt driving the rear roller. We'll replace the rollers with some conveyor belt drive ended ones, and it does have a heated bed, so it should be just a drop-in upgrade. Due to its limitations, I do need to make the top and bottom of the belt flat, which is why we're doing this maybe a little oddly. That and designing and assembling hinges would be a lot more tedious, so we'll wait to see if the concept works before we go that far. And now I remember why the drive rollers and the belt rollers were separate on the uh, flexible belt. Luckily I've got some idle printers in the other room. Back in a minute. Well, that job is much easier when you got the right parts. Now, to get the belt on, I'm just draping it around and taping it into a loop. Few fits and starts, but basically, as long as the belt is lined up with itself, it should be alright. My brain says I don't need to tension the belt too much, but having it dangle seems like a bad idea, so we're going to sort of happy middle there. And, uh, it's ready for a test print. Will it work at all? I'll let this guy print, play with it a bit, I'll give you a short overview at the end of the video.
Mm. Well, working a good bit better than expected. No problems with the belt, the drive, the feed. Had some predictable problems with the slats not sticking on because it's not nearly robust enough. But for a first attempt, I'm very pleased. We're printing these uh, tessellating spiral units. If you print out 12, you can make cool patterns and there's an infinite tessellation. So the more you print, the better. I think I'm going to tweak some settings, see if I can get the release to work a little better, and keep on printing. Thanks for watching. Happy printing.